tonight true stories of daring attempts to help and courageous battles to survive on Rescue 911. We begin in the dead of winter in Denver, Colorado, as a normal morning for the employees of the Rio Grande Credit Union took an unexpected turn. The aerial footage in the story was taped as the events unfolded on February 9th, 1988. At 11.20 a.m., a call for help came into the Denver 911 center. Denver emergency. This, this is Rio Grande Credit Union. We just got robbed. 4593. Wait, wait. Slow down. Okay. 4593 Pecos. The man is running down 46th Avenue. Wait, wait. He's running which way? He's running east. And her, if they, if they, I can still see him. The credit union? Yes. He, did he run into that building? I don't see him anymore. Did he run around the corner? What's your name, honey? Pardon me? What is your name? My name is Debbie. Debbie, I want you to stay on. not in the truck. Wait, Debbie, you have to stay on the line and talk to the policeman. Okay, I am, but I'm... Stay on the line, honey. The call was transferred to veteran police dispatcher John Kane. Are you okay? I have a speaker, but it's come on the line. Okay. Go ahead. Hello, ma'am. Hi, this is the Rio Grande Credit Union. We just got robbed. Okay, what's your address there, ma'am? 4593 Coast. Time is of the essence at this uh -huh. point. These individuals that pull these armed robberies are dangerous people. How many parties held you up? One party. One party? How long? I started to get the information from the victim and simultaneously get it out to the officers. Main door ran down, 46 Left out your main door ran down. Detectives Gary Baldwin and Rick Rollins were the nearest officers to the scene when the report of the armed robbery first came over the radio. Knowing that the party only had two ways out of the area in which he was traveling, we decided to pull up into the area where the robbery had taken place rather than going straight to the credit union. It looked like he got into a two-color blazer. A two-tone color blazer? Brown with a white vinyl with a white top. Brown. It's Brown blazer with a white top. Right. Rick, that's him. That's him. A few him. moments later, we saw the car coming uh, toward us, and we started to follow it. X-14. X-14. The X-14 came on the air and said that they spotted a vehicle. Just turned off a Calumet eastbound on 38th Avenue. We didn't pull the vehicle over because we were in a totally unmarked car. There was no way we could warn the public if anything went wrong. The car to cover X-14. You don't know what the reaction might be when you stop this party. Uh, he may give up instantly or he may try to shoot it out with you. This 115, I'm right behind him. Okay, 115. In less than a minute, an officer in a squad car caught up with them. Okay, uniform car's on him. Okay, your exact location now. Okay, we're going under the underpass to Interstate 70 westbound, and he is refusing to stop. Okay, reportedly it's an outside steal from Glendale. That's... Okay, he's going around the corner. Look, look out, Rick. In another part of the city, News helicopter pilot Mike Silva and photographer Jim Stair had just finished shooting aerial shots for a local newscast. We were en route back to the airport when the assignment desk advised us of the uh, police situation occurring in northwest Denver. They wanted us to head that way and take pictures. As we were headed towards the scene, Mike programmed the radio to receive the uh, police department. Hey, he's still westbound. You could hear the sirens in the background. You could hear the engine noise on the vehicles as they accelerated, brakes screeching. You could tell that there was a desperate situation occurring. When we continue, policemen were coming head on. I saw him coming around the corner. I got him. Okay. Uh, I got him. Got him. We're coming around. around. We're coming left. Hang on. We immediately did a pull-up, 180-degree turn, came in behind the chase vehicle. Okay, now. Found on Tennyson from 50th, 115 and 16. You're behind the chase or behind the car. Victor 10, we're coming uh, 50th, 49th and Tennyson. Okay, Victor 10. The suspect vehicle was going around cars. 
forcing vehicles off the road, going through stop signs at a high rate of speed. 115. This was a very determined individual they were chasing. Still southbound. Okay, 112, cross 46 southbound on Tennyson. The chase continued winding through residential streets at 55, 60 miles an hour. This becomes very, very hazardous then. Had it been a situation other than a uh, armed robbery suspect, we would have discontinued that chase long before it got to those speeds. The news helicopter continued to track the truck from above. Okay, too many cars. 115, you're calling. Everybody was in the chase. Policemen were coming head on at him, and he would actually play chicken with them. He just barely missed that cop car. He's going after him. He's going after those police cars. It's a nutcase here. Nutcase. I'm thinking this person's a maniac, and he's creating a very dangerous situation. At this point, we probably had 15 or 20 cars involved blocking traffic, advising us of the location. It was really getting more and more dangerous as time went on. As he was speeding down the street, I, I saw a white car stopped in the street. A man jumped out of the car. Jim and I then witnessed the suspect vehicle hit that individual and sent his uh, body cartwheeling through the air. There was no question that he, he had died on impact. The suspect continued up the hill. There were no brake lights. There was no slowing of the vehicle. There was no concern for that human life that uh, is now laying in the street there. I kicked the helicopter around so I could look back. The death of that individual had formed a natural barrier which stopped the chase. There was nobody in pursuit. Okay, give me a car in here right away where? When we continue. During a high-speed chase in Denver, an armed robbery suspect had managed to elude police when they struck and killed a man standing in the street. Stop and see what he needs. I hollered at my partner. I said, stop, stop. We've got to help this guy. We need an ambulance at 48th Avenue to Tallahassee County. Hit a pedestrian, 48th and Tennyson. I ran over to where the, the party was. He was dead. I remember shaking my head thinking, this poor guy didn't have a chance. And one of the other detectives saw his identification laying on the, on the ground. The man was Detective Bob Wallace. I've known him for 17 years and had no idea that was him laying there. That's how badly he was injured. It was terrible. Okay, we got an officer down here. News pilot Mike Silva and photographer Jim Stair were now the only ones tracking the suspect. He uh, came to a T intersection. At the speed he was going, there was no way he was going to make the turn. We just stayed with him the best we could. Okay. Two start the investigators for this accident. Two twenty six. I realized the police officers didn't know what was going on now on the ground. Silva and Stair wanted to tell the police where the suspect was, but they were only set up to talk to their own newsroom. 112. 112. We've got a Channel 4 News helicopter overhead that apparently has seen him look where he's at. Try to get a hold of him to ascertain where the heck he's at. I can hear him talk about the helicopter, but I couldn't talk to the police officers. I knew that everybody could see me up there. Hopefully, they're going to use me as a beacon to track this suspect. Okay, car to cover 226 on foot at 51st and Tennyson. We observed the suspect going into this parking lot of this apartment complex. I said to Jim, you know what's going to happen next? He's going to take a hostage. Okay, Victor, Tim. I just felt kind of helpless there. 
Down below, 21-year-old Mary Ann Barbary and her baby boy were about to leave the parking lot, unaware of the armed suspect approaching her car. I saw him raise the pistol. Though the bullet hit the car, it missed both Mary Ann and her baby. I'm thinking this person is intent on getting away at any cost. It doesn't matter who he has to hurt or kill. Okay. He keeps looking up at us. I can see that he's upset. We're still with him. Two people were standing out beside an old pickup. We had the gun out. All we could do was watch. I immediately advised the assignment desk what's going on. I was afraid for that hostage's life. Okay, I'll... 120, we need cars on uh, Sheridan by the trailer park. He ran down the hill towards the trailer park. Officer Roger Prince was in one of the cars searching the trailer park. I could see a helicopter circling and bouncing all around in the sky. Okay, so using that as a key, I just pulled up in the mobile home shopping center area was waiting and watching. Units from all over were converging on the area, including Officer Jim Weissman. My thought at that particular point was, okay, he's got to be on foot somewhere in this trailer park. There was a guy. Let me kick it around. Okay. We watched the green pickup truck leaving the mobile home park. We saw police cars coming from the other direction, and we thought, well, this is pretty much it. It's, you know, it's going to end right here. I'm going to set you up here. we got plenty of air. I immediately yeah. bring the helicopter to a hover to take pictures of the arrest. Come down to 53rd place on uh, Tennyson and go east at the trailer park. We saw just an old guy driving it. Didn't really think that much about it at all. At that point, I started pointing out the window towards the truck, hoping the guys were looking. We thought he was going to get away. I said to myself, we're going to try to put an end to this situation right here, right in this parking lot, right now. Coming down. Keith and I just looked at each other and thought, that's the truck that just drove by us. Right here by the trailer. Okay, at 53rd and Tennyson. I could see that the suspect was forcing the victim to drive out of the parking lot. I knew exactly what he was going to do. He was going to take it, that next exit and he was going to be into another mess again. in front of the truck and sat there. The suspect then aimed his pistol at us. I knew at that time I had to do something. A cop car rammed the side of the truck and probably saved our lives. Cops were screaming at him to give it up, give it up. As soon as the skid touched the ground, I just popped my door open and kept moving in as close as I could. About that time, it looked like he turned the pistol from the hostage towards one of the cops, and they started shooting. It come to a point where it was either kill or be killed. It was that simple. 
The 23-year-old suspect died at the scene of multiple gunshot wounds. He was subsequently found to have recently escaped from prison in Texas. His hostage, John Lorienti, was unharmed. Though Officer Prince had been injured by a flying bullet shrapnel, no one else at the scene had been hurt. Thank God that Silva's had enough intestinal fortitude to put that helicopter in front of the truck and stop any further chase. Silva's may have stopped any further deaths. Uh, he put himself in grave danger, and I thank the man for it. There was no elation whatsoever. There was no feeling that I made the touchdown, it's over, we won. I started thinking about everything that just happened in the last 22 minutes, and it left you empty. There were too many uh, tragedies that negated any feelings whatsoever of elation, gratification, satisfaction. Five days later, the city of Denver paid their last respects to Detective Bob Wallace, a 22-year veteran struck down by the suspect as he tried to get away. The day before this incident took place, Bob had uh, come up and he wanted to tell everyone about his new granddaughter. He was, he was so happy, so extremely happy. I'll never forget that. It just, God, it hurts. I'll miss my father, seeing my daughter grow up. I miss his sense of humor and just him being there when things get tough for me. But my dad was doing what he loved to do. And he was right in the middle of it in the chase. He wasn't sitting back with his feet up on a desk. He was out there chasing bad guys. You know, that's uh, some consolation. You've done such a wonderful job. Several weeks later, 73-year-old hostage John Lorienti finally got a chance to thank news photographer Jim Stair and pilot Mike Silva. Here's, some, here's somebody you want to meet? Mike Silva. Oh, God bless you. You're a hell of a man, you know that? Yeah. I'm so proud of you. You're the, you're the, you're man the to best be the helicopter guy I've ever you're seen. The person to be. When I met John for the first time, it was great. Uh, he thought I was the greatest thing since sliced bread. He called me the helicopter boy. Mike Silva saved my life. And I try to do my part by saving his life. When the truck was blocked off, that's when Hutchison says, you better ram that helicopter. He said, because if you don't, we're both going to be dead. And I told him, no. I said, I won't ram him. I'm not going to kill the pilot. I said, no. Way. Nothing bored when that car rammed. He got up close and he got bow. That was it. I said, oh, thank God. That helicopter boy. I don't have to hit him. I got away from him. You got the job, In appreciation of John's courage, the TV station and a local car dealership presented him with a brand new pickup truck. He handed me the truck keys and said, Here, John, go on fishing. And I said, well, you're kidding. I couldn't believe it. I said, I'm just a lucky man. Bye-bye, Johnny. Leave it.